In thy name we pray. Amen. For the AAA championship, we have the Mountain Lions of Charleston. And the Bruins of Brook High School. Introducing Charleston's head coach, John Vinsel. Brooks head coach, Dave Reiter. For Charleston, assistant coach, Lowell Harris. For Brook, assistant coaches, Bud Scroggins, Kevin McCormick, and George Brindley Trainer. For Charleston High, the managers are John Stigel and Matt Duncan. For Brook High, Wayne Hilt, Tony Rodellini, John Townsend, and John Massaros. The Lions Club host for Charleston is Harold Gardner. Charleston Lions Club host for Brook is Eric McAllister. Now introducing the squads for Charleston, number 35 is Jeff Jones. For Brook, number 33, Kent Orban. For the Mountain Lions, number 33, Travis Ramsour. For the Bruins, number 55, Kevin Morris. For Charleston, number 15, Virgil Smith. For Brook, number 13, Tony Perito. For the Mountain Lions, number 25 is Amari Latta. For the Bruins, number 11, Tom Lupinetti. From Charleston, number 41, James Brandon. From Brook, number 51, John Gallagher. For Charleston, number 31 is Andrew Payne. For Brook, number 43, Charles Basil. For the Mountain Lions, number 21, Tommy Hess. For the Bruins, number 44, Lance Chambers. And now your starting lineups for Charleston High. At guard, 5'10", a junior, number 13, Jason Berkeley. For Brook, at guard, a 6'2", senior, number 41, Bobby Honig. For the Mountain Lions at guard, 5'10", a junior, number 23, Tony Jackson. For the Bruins at guard, a 6'2 sophomore, number 31, Chris Gallo. For Charleston at center, 6'2, a junior, number 45, Mark Mason. For the Bruins at center, a 6'6 senior, number 35, J.J. Pavlik. For Charleston at forward, 6'1, a junior, number 43, Ivy Hall. For Brook at forward, a 6'3 senior, number 21, Aaron McAllister. And for Charleston, at forward, 6'7", a senior, number 11, Greg Dennis. For Brooke, at forward, a 6'5", senior, number 23, Kevin Curry. We ask you to please stand now for the singing of our national anthem by South Charleston High School student, Julie Burt.
It's game time. The tip-off is next after this message from Glenville State College. At Glenville State College, enrollment this year increased nearly 16% over last year. Glenville State College now has a new campus in Summersville. Glenville State College is covering its own gas utility expenses with two gas wells on campus property. Glenville State College is now ready to build a new fine arts building. If you're getting a picture of growth, intelligent use of resources, a college that goes beyond the average in pursuit of excellence, you've got the right picture. At Glenville State College, there are strong liberal arts and teacher education programs, as well as nursing and sports management, all four-year programs. Two-year degrees are offered in forestry, land surveying, petroleum engineering, and many other fields. Programs designed to fill specific needs in West Virginia's job market. And Glenville State still offers the best education for less, as fees remain lower than on other campuses. In addition, considerable financial assistance is available. Call 1-800-344-4407 and talk about the future, your future, at Glenville State. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the West Virginia Secondary Schools Activities Commission through the Metro News Radio Network solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and account of this game without the written consent of the Metro News Radio Network is strictly prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast have been approved by the West Virginia SSAC and are employed by the Metro News Radio Network. Now, here's Jack Fleming. In 1914, Elkins 28, Wheeling 13. Now we do it for the 74th time, Willie Akers. It's been a lot of years. A it, lot of years. <laughs> All right. Dennis out there for Charleston. Charleston in gold will go to the right. It's the home team. Brooke in green will go to the left. And Kevin Curry jumping, and they'll do it again. Curry is 6'5". Dennis is 6'7". They'll try it all over again. Charleston in gold with blue numerals. Brooke in green with white numerals, gold trim, and the ball is tapped by Curry, but picked off by Ivy Hall of Charleston. Charleston on the attack, left to right. And here they come, Berkeley with the ball, going to the right corner area to Ivy Hall. Back out around to Jackson. And we see Brooke in a 2-3 zone. They're set up in a 2-3, and they're going, uh, Charleston's going to try to work that ball inside. And you see the ball going into Dennis. Turnaround shot is off the back of the rim. No good, and the rebound is pulled out of there by Brooke on the attack. Gallo got it, and down they come. Hunting for the ball outside to Gallo. Swing over to the right side to McAllister. And that's a Charleston man defense. And the long shot taken by the outside by Hunting is no good. And on the rebound, it is tipped out by Charleston, and Brooke will inbound it. Last night, I noticed Brooke has a real good 2-3 zone. They gave Morgantown trouble getting a shot off. They're, they have a real fine 2-3 three, two, two, three zone. Inbound pass to Curry, taken away from him by Jason Berkeley. Berkeley drives quickly into the front court, pulls up outside, gives the pass to Ivy Hall. Back out to Berkeley. Berkeley trying to force the bounce pass down to Mark Mason, and it is kicked out by Brooke. Inbounds play Dennis from the end line. Now they bring it out again to Berkeley. Berkeley is 5'10. Jackson is 5'10. Berkeley swings it around to the left, Ivy Hall. And we're watching Dennis inside. It's crowded in there. The ball goes in to Mason. Mason bites it into the right side. About eight foot range. This has been the man of the tournament. I think he's probably one of the best players we got in the tournament. He's done more work than anybody so far. He's had 51 points in two games. And he has been sensational. Brooke on the attack. Down to the left side. Gallo goes baseline all the way. Lays it up short. Off the rim. Great Dennis with the rebound for the Mountain Lions. Gives the ball to Berkeley, and Berkeley again brings it up over the 10-second line. Pass goes down to the left corner to Ivy Hall. Now they swing it out around to Jackson. Jackson gets it down to Mason. Back out to Berkeley. 15-foot jumper is too hard, and the ball is tipped around over into the corner. Ivy Hall retrieves. Back again to Jason Berkeley. Berkeley gives it back in the left corner to Hall. Now they come out to Berkeley again against the zone. Out in the front of the zone, Honig and Gallo for Brook. The ball goes on the high post on a leaping catch by Dennis. He lost it. Picks it up again, and they bring it back outside. Down to the left corner, setting it up with Ivy Hall. Now off the ball, a foul called on J.J. Pavlik. Charleston's well disciplined. They're going to work that ball, work it, and work it until they get it into those two big men. That's one of the best uh, disciplined ball clubs I've seen in a long time. They're really working around, and they know what they're, they're supposed to do, and they do it. At the baseline now, Dennis. Fire it into the left side. Coming back out to Berkeley. Back over to Dennis toward the left corner. Greg Dennis is 6 7. He's playing down near the baseline, and Pavlik is assigned to him in that zone. Here's a pass knocked out outside. Picked up by Brooklyn, taken back. 
by Jason Berkeley. Berkeley brings it up the floor. Over the midcourt line. Driving down to the right of the key. Goes into the paint. Goes up for the shot. It is blocked by Pavlik. Brook with the ball. Driving. Holding coming down. Holding going in. Holding scoring for Brook. Very good move by Horning. That's a great play. 2-2 ball game. Charleston coming back. Berkeley over the midcourt line. Berkeley giving the ball outside to Jackson. Round to the right corner now to Ivy Hall. Out to Jackson again. Jackson holds on to it. Over to Ivy Hall. They extend that zone out toward the sidelines. They'll come out and challenge the ball. And they have shown that they can also bring it out away from the basket. Now off the ball. The foul called on Mark Mason of Charleston. That will be his first. Brooke is real good in that defense. They really get after you. And I'll tell you, a block shot was the key to that score they got just a while ago. And the, the big Pavic's a good basketball player and he does a great job. Here is Gallo, the 6'2 sophomore, into the front court. Hits the right wing. Curry. Curry looks underneath. Drops it off to Honing. Honing into the paint with a ball to Pavlik for a turnaround shot. That's a beauty. About 12 foot range and he hit it. He started off like that last night. Brooke leading 4-2. Charleston coming back up the floor. 4.45 to play in the opening period at the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum for all the marbles in AAA in West Virginia. Out on the dribble, Jackson. Over with the ball to Berkeley. Carefully brings it off on the right side. Backs up a bit. Flips it into the right corner. Comes back out again to Jackson. Now here is Berkeley getting the high pass in to Dennis. Dennis takes the shot on the left side. No good, but followed up by Ivy Hall. The unsung hero. Ivy does a great job of passing. Slips in there and gets a rebound. Harry Thomas Hall the fourth hits it 4-4 ball game now the ball into Pavlik Pavlik covered puts it up on the right side no good at the rebound jerked out of there by Tony Jackson Jackson to Berkeley and Berkeley now coming over the midcourt line 2-3 zone for Brooke down to the right corner to Ivy Hall then back out around to Berkeley Berkeley looks in moves the ball over to Jackson he takes a 15 foot jumper at the right of the key no good rebound outside Gallo down the floor to Honig Honig comes in covered he fires and that was about 17 foot range at the left of the key he hit a beauty he's a good basketball player Horning 6-4 is the score Brooke in the lead 340 to play in the opening period Charleston on the attack and the ball knocked away from Ivy Hall but he gets it back from Kevin Curry Pass comes outside to Berkeley. Berkeley across to the right side to Jackson. Looks in. Pass goes down to the right corner to Ivy Hall. Then back out again to Berkeley. Berkeley's pass though. Broken up by Honig. Takes it up. Honig goes. He lays it up. Good. Honig with three field goals. Brook with an 8-4 lead. We get a timeout of the ball game and with a timeout of the court. Let's hear this message from West Virginia Institute of Technology. West Virginia Institute of Technology and Montgomery combines the features today's college student wants the most. Location, a variety of programs, a choice of two or four year degrees, to say nothing of athletic excellence. West Virginia Tech is located just 30 minutes away from the state capital and all the advantages the greater Charleston area has to offer. As the only technical college in the state of West Virginia, Tech offers over 60 different degrees, preparing students for careers in engineering, teaching, computer-related fields, and a large variety of other pursuits. Tech is close to many of West Virginia's favorite recreational areas, just minutes away from whitewater rafting, snow skiing, and golfing. If you're a high school student with an eye on the future, look to Tech. Call toll-free in West Virginia, 1-800-222-WVIT. Outside the state, call 304-442-3167. Find out more about West Virginia Tech and today's education for tomorrow's jobs. Back again at the Civic Center Coliseum, Bob Honing, a 6-2 big guard, has scored three out of the four Brook field goals, and he continues to impress me because... He is intense and he is powerful out there. He really is, and he does a great job. He two of those, one on a steal and one on a, a loose ball. Two of those baskets have been that way, and he beat a man down here at the other end. He's big and he's very deceptive. If you want to get a picture of him and you're familiar with West Virginia basketball, picture Bobby Huggins, and he looks a lot like him and about the same size. Maybe a little shorter, but he looks a lot like him. Played for the Mountaineers. Jackson outside. Now they uh, switch their defense. They're coming up. Let's watch them here, Willie. Looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. Yes, sir. Changing it around. The ball goes over to Hall. Hall bounces it in, gets it to Mason. And Mason with that powerful move from the left side right around to the hoop. And that's the one they have to stop. Eight to six. Honig has six for Brooke. Mason has four for Charleston. And here's Honig with the ball. The pass goes into Pavlik. Pavlik lays it up under pressure for the left side, and he hits it. He's a fine player, too. 
10 to 6. Pavlik, the 6 6 pivot man for the Bruins. On a turnaround jumper for the left side. Now full court pressure by Brooke. Moving against it. Charleston's Jason Berkeley trying to get over the 10 second line. He is in the offensive zone and playing off of him outside Kevin Curry. Here's a lob pass going into Dennis. They come in and gather around Dennis like bees going to honey. And a foul is called. Aaron McAllister commits the foul. Charleston continues to push that ball into the two big men. Dennis inbounds on the left side to Jackson. Jackson comes out with a pass to Berkeley. Now we see the 2-3 zone again. Over the left wing. And the ball. Ivy Hall trying to get the pass in, knocked back. He saves it, gets it into Dennis. Dennis takes the little jumper. The left side and hits it. 10-8. Brook in the lead. 157 to play in the opening period. Here comes Brooke. Honig, this is an 18-footer for the outside of the left. No good off the rim. Rebound by McAllister. Can't hold it. And we get a traveling call on him. Aaron McAllister doing a yeoman job in there, but he was bumped around and traveled in the process. In the backcourt, the inbound pass to Jason Berkeley. Berkeley bounce, bounce over the midcourt line. Medium speed coming into the front court. Pass goes left over to Ivy Hall. Back out around the horn. Over to Berkeley. Berkeley bounces Harbin down to Mason. Doubled up. He gets the ball. Finally puts up a shot that is blocked by Pavlik and picked up by Dennis. He puts up a shot that is no good. And Pavlik with the rebound. Here comes Brook. Outlet to Curry. Curry in the front court. Curry bouncing off to Honig on the right side. Honig whips the ball into Curry. Curry hooks it. Little jump hook to the right side. Beautiful and move. it's good. Yes, sir. Brook looks real sharp tonight. 12 8. Brook in the lead. 1 13 in the first quarter. Jason Berkeley in the offensive zone over to Jackson. Jackson, a couple of steps on the dribble. Now he's got Honing on him, gives up the ball to Berkeley. Berkeley outside with a minute to go. Over to the right wing to Hall. Now around again to Berkeley. Berkeley looks inside, gives the ball to Jackson, right side of the key, and around to Ivy Hall. They want those big guys. Here it goes from Berkeley into Mason. Mason puts it up and is fouled. It's amazing, Jack. They just keep working it, keep working it, and finally get it inside. So Mason is fouled by McAllister, and Mark Mason will go to the line for a three-point chance in a 12-10 ball game. Brooke has changed their defense three times. They've been in a man-to-man, 1-3-1, -man, uh, and a 2-3. So they really have got some good, smart basketball players out there. All right, here is Mark Mason at the line. Against Logan, he was three for four at the foul line. Mason dips down low, puts it up. It is good. What else? And we have a 12-11 ball game. He's just a junior, too, so he's got another year to go. On the dead ball, Lance Chambers comes in to replace Aaron McAllister. Chambers, a 6-3 junior for Brook. 45 seconds to play in the opening period. Brook by one on the attack. Gallo coming into the front court over on the right side. Gives the ball over there to Pavlik. Pavlik playing outside. Now he goes underneath. Honig with the ball. Over to the wing on the right side. The guy back out to Honig. Shoots top of the key. Nothing but nets. Honig has hit four of them. 14-11. Bob Honig hits that one for Brook. Back down the floor for Charleston. Jason Berkeley into the front court. Pass left wing. Take it by Ivy Hall. Jackson pops out to take it back. Gives it to Berkeley. Berkeley trying to bounce into Mason. Mason can't get it. He is fouled. And the foul is charged to Lance Chambers, his first. And they continue to go in there, so uh, they're going to draw a few fouls, uh, particularly with the officiating from the southern end of the state will be a little bit closer to what it would be in the northern officials. This is the fourth team foul against Brook as Greg Dennis inbounds the ball to the right side. Comes in to Tony Jackson. Jackson back outside again to Jason Berkeley. Clock down to six. Five. They go to Ivy Hall, gets it in the Mason turnaround shot for the right as an air ball. Pulled out of the air by Curry. Fires a long one down the floor as the buzzer sounds. The end of the first period with the score. Brook 14, Charleston 11. This is the Metro News Radio Network.
John McKinney with his stats 7 of 12 for Brooke from the field Charleston 5 of 13 turnovers Brooke 3 Charleston 2. It's been unusual to see McKinney here without Jim Galuski his running mate but Galuski showed up today. I saw him in the lobby of the hotel so they've got that team together Willie. That's a good team. <laughs> All right. Brooke with the ball out of bounds near side Kevin Curry to inbound it. Curry a 6'5 senior ready to go. Inbounds pass goes to Gallo. Gallo carefully coming into the front court. Charleston plays a man defense. Gallo whips it down toward the left corner to Curry. Curry moving toward the basket. The ball comes back outside to Honig. Honig shoots 19 footer up off the rim. Rebound Mark Mason. And Mason is fouled. And that will put them over the limit. The foul is on J.J. Pavlik. Number two on Pavlik. The official was going to put it out of bounds, and Jason Berkeley reminded him of that it's the one plus one. They can't afford to lose Pavlik. Uh, he's going to have to watch himself here in the next few minutes. So they want to keep him in the ball game. 7:44 to play in the second period, and Mason at the line for the second time. He has seven points in the ball game. Mark Mason at the line of the right dips with the right hand. It is good. 14 to 12. Mason now with his bonus shot. Charleston trailing by two. Mason ready again. Dips, fires it. It is perfect. He is three for three at the foul line. 14 13. Brook leading by one. Bruins on the attack, right to left. Gallo in the front court, outside to Honig. Honig whips it over to the left wing to Curry. Curry trying to get it inside to Chambers, and we have a whistle. The ball eluded Chambers. Ivy Hall. Ivy Hall gets his first foul. That is the second team foul on the Mountain Lions. At the baseline, Honig will be the inbounder. He drops it inside on the left side of Chambers. They come back out high to Pavlik. Back around to Honig. Honig from the left side was long. That was an 18 footer. And the ball on the rebound taken by Brooke. Out to Gallo. Over to Curry. Curry fires from 17. Angle right and hits it. And it is a 16 13 ball game. Curry's made a couple of nice shots tonight. He's he plays with a little smile on his face. He's a happy ball player. Plays with intensity too. Ball goes into Dennis. They double up, triple up on Dennis. Turn around shot. He hits it. Dennis yeah, in right. the middle of a mob. Reversed himself and went back the other way. 16-15. The Brook zone collapses on Dennis so quickly, but he handled it that time. Outside now, Honig whipping it around toward the right corner. Got away from Gaio momentarily. Back out to Honig. He tries to get it down inside the Pavlik. Knocked down. They scrap for it on the wood. Great hustle, great hustle. And the ball goes to Charleston on the alternate possession. That is the fourth turnover for Brook. So as they used to say, they were picking up splinters on that play. And here comes Jason Berkeley. Brook extending its defense a 2-2-1. Here's the pass into the front court to Dennis. Dennis comes down, bounces it to Jackson, breaking along the baseline. Jackson takes the shot blocked by Pavlik. Brook with the ball. Honig comes down with two men on him. Lays it up and in. And he was no basket. No, no basket. He was fouled, but they overruled the basket. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. Foul on Ivy Hall. The official indicated it was a floor foul. No basket. Holding at the baseline. Inbounds pass to the left side to Chambers. Now back over to Honig. He gets it into Curry for a hook shot that does not land. Mark Mason with a rebound for Charleston. Honig did not react to that call, and that is the sign of a good athlete. It sure is. He does a great job. He just plays basketball. All right, here comes Charleston on the attack. They move it down to the left corner to Ivy Hall. Hall looks under, comes out with a pass to Jackson. In the meantime, they've got Mason posted up. They try to hit him with a pass. It is wide of him, goes out of bounds. Brooke will get it back. Mason stamps the floor. That is the third turnover for Charleston. Mason looks like he might chew somebody up. I'll tell you, both teams really play. They don't complain. They just go play basketball. 
Guy on the front court over left side to Honig. And the pass goes down toward the left corner to Chambers and back to Gallo. In the meantime, they've got Padlick drifting underneath. They want to get it to him. Gallo instead takes it down himself, lays it up, and rolls around the rim and hops out on him in a rebound taken by Jason Berkeley. The Mountain Lions back with the ball. They trail by one. 5.35 to go in the first half at the Civic Center Coliseum. To the left corner to Hall. Hall gets it into Dennis. Dennis baseline, lays it up, rolls it over the rim. It misfires. Lance Chambers with the rebound. Brooke with the ball. Down to Curry. Curry drives. Curry lays it up. No good. He was fouled. And the foul called on Mark Mason of Charleston. That will be his second. Mason was supposed to be a good football player. He sure took a charge there. The man ran right over him, but it was he may have, must have been moving just a little bit. Kevin Curry was one for one against Parkersburg, and he came back against Morgantown one for one, so he's two for two in this tournament. And he's in there for two shots. At the line to the left. Puts it up. No good. That's his first miss. It's a little word of encouragement from Bobby Honing. Curry will stand in again. 1650 Brook leading 523 to play in the first half. Curry hits it. One out of two 1750 ball game. And in the backcourt the inbounds play. Looks like a big big East crowd here hollering behind the basket <laughs> trying to get that fellow to miss that foul shot. Something has happened to Jackson. The official has stopped the game. Trainer runs out on the floor. He's limping a little bit. He says, I'm okay, but he doesn't look too good. No. They did not use a substitute last night. He's going to try to stay in there, but he can't look like they can't even walk. Oh, he's not. They're not making the move, but he can't uh, he can't move well on that leg. He's a long pass to me. Let's see what he does. Takes it toward the baseline, checks, looks under, gives it down to Mason. Mason in the crowd, back outside again to Berkeley. Oh, Jackson. He's missed. having a time, Jack. Yeah. Ball goes to Jackson, looks under. Back out again to Berkeley, around to the right side. Ivy Hall, 15-foot jumper, rims it no good. Rebound, pulled out of there by Honig. And here is Jackson having difficulty getting down the floor. Long jump shot, Honig spins out of the rim. Rebound taken by Dennis. Gives the ball to Berkeley. And they've got to get a substitute in for Jackson because he looks like a lame horse. Ball is loose. Picked up by Mason. Out to Jackson. There's a 15-footer. He can shoot it, but it doesn't drop. Padlick with a rebound for Brook. 17-15, Brook leading. Jeff Jones ready to come on the floor for the Mountain Lions. Outside, Honig with the ball. Honig guarded by Jackson. Ball tipped away at a pass. Mason picks it up. Mason comes down. Goes around Honig. Lays it up. Banks it. And it's good. What a play. That was a beautiful play by Mason. Mason on the steal. Looked like a great opportunity for Honig to have gone one-on-one -on -one with Jackson that time down. Jackson having trouble keeping his footing. Now we get a dead ball and a replacement for Tony Jackson. Horning took him right down underneath the basket, just like you said, and, and he got a foul. And Jackson picked up a foul before he sat down. Is he still in there? No, he's going out to the, uh, he's going to the locker room. room. Right. Jones, a 6'2 senior. They'll have him back. At the line to the left, on the one and one, Bob Honig hits. Honey, nine points. Brook leading 18-17. Honey puts up the second shot. It is a good one. And with a timeout of the ball game, let's take this opportunity to hear from West Virginia State. West Virginia State is much more than a convenient option for continuing education. This is Jim Huffman, Assistant Director of Admissions for West Virginia State College. Sometime this year, I have probably visited your school telling juniors and seniors why West Virginia State College is the college they should strongly consider. West Virginia State College is located eight miles west of Charleston on I-64 and offers a multitude of two- and four-year academic programs for your consideration. State has been accredited continuously longer than any other public college or university in West Virginia. That says a lot about its quality programs, outstanding teachers, and modern facilities. A broad array of scholarships, a highly respected academic program, and an exciting athletic program combined to give you West Virginia State College. Join the tradition. 
call me, Jim Huffman, at 766-3221, or write the admissions office, West Virginia State College, Institute, West Virginia, 25112. Give yourself a head start. Do it today. State of art and mind, West Virginia State. Seems, Willie, that when Charleston comes down and hurries the shot, it doesn't work. But if Charleston is uh, careful and determined to get it inside, it has a shot. On the other side of the coin, they're not reaching Pavlik as much, but Honig picks up the slack so beautifully. They sure do, and I'm sure Pavlik will come back a little bit in the second half. They'll adjust to Horning in the halftime, but you're right, exactly right. When Charleston works it around and they get a good shot, they're okay. But if they come down hurriedly, they don't do as well. Here's Jason Berkeley into the front court for Charleston. Gives it over to Ivy Hall. Works the pass down to Dennis. Dennis lost it. He had to go high. Couldn't hold it. Curry took it. Feeds it down to Honig. Honig tied up down on the floor. Honig lost it. Went down with it. And the alternate possession arrow points to Brook. That was Greg Dennis. Down there scraping up varnish. Trying to get it away from him. And Bobby Honig will inbound on the near side of the floor at the hash mark. In the front court for Brook. Ball goes in to Lance Chambers outside to Honig. Honig the playmaker, Honig the score. Honig feeding one down inside, he missed that time. Threw it directly to Mark Mason. Thought he had somebody breaking, nobody was there except Mason. Mason comes up with a big steal, and Charleston has an opportunity to tie up the ball game. Berkeley to the right wing, over to Jeff Jones. Back out again to Berkeley, around to Ivy Hall. He looks underneath, gives it to Berkeley. They swing it over to the right side. Meantime, we've got two men posted low. The ball goes down to Dennis, and Dennis is fouled by Lance Chambers. They've had to move Ivy Hall out front now, and he's, he made another nice pass inside from out front. It's a one and one for a grab on the wrist, and Dennis will go to the line. Against Logan, Dennis made one out of two. Against South Charleston, he made two out of four. He's three out of six. In this tournament, Dennis at the line to the right. The free throw is across and good. At the front of the rim, up against the glass, and it dropped in. 1918. And Brooke makes a substitution. McAllister comes back in, replacing Chambers. This is a ball game I thought it would be. I thought it'd be close. Uh, I, I feel like Brooke is real strong, but Charleston did a great job inside on those big men. Uh, and off the rim to the left on this free throw. Rebound taken by J.J. Pavlik. A tower of strength for Brooke. To Curry down to Honig. Honig over to Gio or Gio. I'm trying to call him Gio for two nights. Chris Gio to Honig again. Now in a weave, Curry takes it back outside to Gio. Gio cuts into the paint from 14. Shotty might have passed up, but he took it. It did not drop. He was fouled on the play. So he comes out of it well. Jason Berkeley fouled it. He was in a pretty good crowd there around the foul line that time. Well, let's see what Gallo has done at the free throw line. 0 for 3 against Morgantown. 0 for 3 against Parkersburg. He's due. He's 0 for 6. He sure is. He's a good shooter, too. At the line to the left, Chris Gallo hits. You talked him right into it, John. <laughs> 20 to 18. 2.55 to play in the first half. Guy opens up the second shot, rims it no good. Tipped around, back outside, Guy with the ball. Jumper from 13, back of the rim, misses, rebound. Mason fights his way out of the crowd. Mason gives the ball to Berkeley, and Berkeley turns on the attack. Charleston into the front court, to the right wing. Bouncing it back to Berkeley, then around to Ivy Hall. He gets it inside the Dennis. Turnaround shot to the left side of the lane is good. 2020, and we have a tie ball game at the 235 mark in the second quarter. Gaio outside. They bring it around to Honig. Honig goes down to the baseline, reverses the dribble, coming back outside. The pass to Curry. Curry, a 19 footer off the rim, right side. Rebound taken by Berkeley outside. Berkeley rambles quickly into the front court, pulls up outside. Berkeley looks for help. And we get a double dribble. Berkeley looks at the sky as though to say, why did I do that? The fifth turnover for Charleston. I don't know how many assists Ivy Hall has, but he's been really popping that ball into Dennis under the basket. Done a great job. 2020 ball game. In the front court now. Chris Guy over the ball on the left side. He gets it into Pavlik, but Pavlik crashes. Pavlik makes the basket. 
Havlick turned and collided with Mason, put it up and in, and there was no reaction anywhere except for the crowd. It went, oh, 22-20. Here's the pass deflected, taken by Gallo. Down the floor to Curry. Curry pulls up, gives it over to Honig. Honig gets it into McAllister. Turnaround shot, off the rim, short. Mason with the ball. And again, you had Havlick reaching in. And Mason's a strong young man. He is. Mm -hmm. To the left wing now. Charleston with the ball. Jeff Jones playing in place of the injured Tony Jackson. Berkeley around to Ivy Hall. Bounce pass down to Mason. Turnaround shot. Off the back of the rim. No good. Rebound pulled out of there by Pavlik. Pavlik up the floor to Honig. Honig checks top of the key around to the right side to Curry. Curry into Pavlik. And a foul called before his shot. Charge to Mark Mason. Number three on Mark Mason. Mason that's number three. That could certainly help hurt Charleston because they certainly need him in the ball game. He's a must for them. He's going to go them to stay in this ball game and even to win it. He's, go he's going out right now. So he is coming out and Tony Jackson is coming back in. Mason, on, an all Kanawha Valley Conference nose guard. That's right. You he's talked tough. about that last night. Right. Mason. All right, here's Pavlik missing on the one and one. Rebound, Greg Dennis, Charleston. Now Charleston will try to hold this thing together while Mason is out of there. Jackson outside, over to Berkeley. Berkeley to the left wing to Ivy Hall. And they lose a lot when they take Mason out of that low position. Inside, a foul is called on Jeff Jones trying to get position, an offensive foul. I think if Charleston can get in with this lead uh, with a couple points or maybe four, I think they'd be very happy with Mason on the bench. So. No player possession on the play, so there will be shooting. Aaron McAllister at the line to the left. McAllister, McAllister one for two against Parkersburg. McAllister three of five against Morgantown. He's four of seven. He misses this one. And it is put in. Honing. 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 Honing got it. Honing. Slipped around behind. Well, he is something. 24 20 in favor of Brooklyn. Here's Brooke with a steal. That's Aaron McAllister getting the ball to Bobby Honing. And Charleston doing what it did not want to do, getting in trouble without Mason in there. Eight turnovers for the Mountain Lions. And Honing now is going to wait for the last shot. He and Guile. We got Honing way out on a deep point. Chambers over on the right side and Guile to his left. In the meantime, Ivy Hall trying to control a man inside. Here's Honig coming to the left side to Gallo. Clock down to seven. Back to Honig. Honig over to the right side to McAllister. Out to Honig. A 19-footer is short off the rim. Rebound. Picked up by Honig at the baseline. Fired again. No good. And the buzzer sounds the end of the first half. It is halftime with the score. Brooke, 24, Charleston, 20. This is the Metro News Radio Network. Tonight, the West Virginia High School Coaches Association will honor retired coaches from throughout the state. These gentlemen have... This Metro News Sports Exclusive is being sponsored in part by Glenville State College for a quality education you can be proud of. And by Shepherd College, an affordable introduction to excellence. The 1987 West Virginia State Championship Tournament continues. Let's return courtside at the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum for second half action. Ready to resume, and the first possession belongs to Charleston. Ivy Hall inbounds the ball to Jason Berkeley, and the Mountain Lions are moving to the left here in the uh, second half of the ball game. We've got Mark Mason back in there playing with three fouls with Greg Dennis down inside. Here's Berkeley from the outside hitting a beautiful 19-footer. That's his first field goal, 24-22. Berkeley right out there on the arc. They need that, a little jump shot from outside to loosen it up in underneath a little bit for them. Gallo left side for Brooke. 
Tries to get a pass into Padlick. Knocked down by Dennis. Picked off by Jackson. Jackson comes down, feeds it to Mason. Mason drives, lays it up short, and it comes off the rim. No good. On the rebound, Charleston gets it back. Knocked out of bounds by Brooke. That was a great opportunity for Charleston to get a couple points there. Mason took it right to the hoop, but he laid it up short. Berkeley outside, back down to Dennis. Dennis from 18 on the left side. He hits it straight over toward the corner and ties up the ball game, 24-24. 7-15 to play in the third quarter. Charleston has scored four quick ones. Gallo in the front court. Over in the right wing, now to get it into Pavlik. Pavlik alone basically saw a man coming, laid it up, and he rolled it off the rim, no good. A scramble for the ball. <laughs> and a tie-up call. What a play. They got about five of them wound up in a pile over there that he called a jump ball. Ball will go back to Brooke on the alternating, alternating possession arrow. Honing the inbounder. Honing on the left side to Curry. Back to Honing. Back outside it comes to Gallo. Gallo gets it down to McAllister. Long one for the right side. 18-foot range. Aaron McAllister gets his first field goal. 26-24. Hits it for Brooke. Good ball game. Round of the left side. They swing the ball to Ivy Hall. He gets it into Dennis. Dennis in a crowd. A turnaround jumper from about six feet, and he hits it. Dennis has got some confidence in that shot tonight. I think a little better than he's been throughout the tournament. 26-26. Brooke back in the front court. Bobby Honig looks inside, bounces it out high, gets the ball out to McAllister. McAllister fires a shot in front of the foul line that is no good, and we have a foul call. This one is charged to Ivy Hall. That is his third. So Hall with three and Mason with three for Charleston. McAllister and Pavlik each with two. Chambers with two for Brooke. And McAllister will go to the line. McAllister missed one earlier. At the line to the right. Puts it up and it is good. Brooke keeps that lead 27 to 26. Brooke trailed 2-0 and took the lead 4-2. to two. There have been ties, but Brooke has never been behind. McAllister again, another good one. 28-26. Right to left. Charleston on the attack. Berkeley in the front court. Berkeley gives the ball upside to Ivy Hall. And back out to Tony Jackson. Jackson puts it over to Berkeley on the right side of quarter court. He sends... Ivy underneath, gives it to him in the right corner. Hall back out again to Jackson, Jackson to Berkeley. Berkeley bounces down to Dennis. Dennis in the crowd, gets it up, bounces around, no good. Rebound, J.J. Pavlik for Brooke. A little tough shot for uh, Dennis. He had to shoot a little bit off bounds. Honig from 18, angle left, it's good. Slipped it over to Honig and he hit it. 30 to 26, Brooke back with a four point lead. Right to left, we've got Berkeley coming into the front court for Charles. Mason being guarded by McAllister. And the ball goes into Dennis. And the foul called on Dennis down inside. That will be his first. They've got him for shoving off and on a lob pass to him. So Charleston has two team fouls. Greg Dennis has one personal. And the ball inbounded by Kevin Curry to Chris Gallo. Gallo left to right into the offensive zone. Pass goes across the top of the key to Honey. Honey goes around Jackson all the way to the basket. Shot blocked by Dennis. Goes out of bounds and will be given to Brooke. Brilliant play for Dennis as Honig was headed straight to the hoop. Honig will be the inbounder for Brooke. Honig looks out deep, gives the ball to Pavlik. Pavlik drops it off to Gallo, and Gallo brings it over to the right side to pass to McAllister. McAllister out to Honey. Honey looks underneath, flips it into the paint, gives it to Pavlik for a jump shot blocked by Dennis. Back out to Honey. Honey over to McAllister. Now to Honey, trying to get it down to Pavlik again, knocked away. Ivy Hall with the ball. Gives it to Jason Berkeley. Dennis made two great defensive plays the last two times down. Seven turnovers, Brooke. Brooke playing a 2-3 zone. Top of the key, Berkeley. Not quite. Hung it up there, it would not stay. Popped out. On the rebound, Curry with the ball. And the foul called on Greg Dennis, his second. Dennis, his second. 
Dennis is really going after it. He made two great plays down here. Blocked the shot and, and uh, also got a rebound. And had a, I mean, a steal. Knocked it down. 447, the clock turning in the third quarter. Here is Brooke in the front court. Guile handling the ball. The pass goes outside to Pavlik. Pavlik over to Honey. Fires long left. 19 footer. He's a money player, Jack. 32 26, a six point lead with 4.31 to go in the third quarter. And Honey now with 16 points. Got Berkeley back in the front court. Pass over left to Ivy Hall, working out away from the corners. They take it around to the right side. Mason puts it up, a beautiful running jumper, turning to the basket. Mason hits it. 32 28. Mason now with 13 points. Left to right. Gaio over to Honig. Jackson coming over to contact him and stay with him. Ball around to the right side to McAllister. Deep right to Curry. Curry outside to McAllister, and now they give it to Gaio. Charleston chasing them man for man. Here's the ball to Pavlik playing out high. Over on the left side to Gaio. They get it down inside to McAllister. And a foul is called. And we get a timeout in the ball game. A good time to hear from Salem College. At Salem College, it's the person who counts. The person you are, the person you wish to be. A Salem College degree is a goal to be reached in as many ways as there are students. With a student-teacher ratio of 14 to 1, every student can count on the individual attention he or she deserves. Encouragement, direction, and recognition. At Salem College, no one is lost in the crowd, but many stand out. Salem College offers a wide range of traditional degrees in professional programs, the humanities, and natural science, as well as a joint baccalaureate nursing program in conjunction with the United Hospital Center. But Salem College is also unique in the state of West Virginia with degrees in aviation, equestrian education, and museum studies. If you'd like to learn more about a small college with big ideas for your future, write Salem College, Salem, West Virginia, 26426. The West Virginia College that takes your goals personally. We have 343 remaining to play in the third period. Brook leading by four, Charleston, with foul trouble here, Dennis picks up his second. They could be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, they've got two with three, and Ivy's got three, and Mason's got three, so they don't have that substitute. So it it's, could come down last quarter with some foul trouble. And mostly the team fouls. Four to none for Brook in this third period. And here's a Brook pass headed inside to McAllister. Broken up down in there by Mason. The ball to Berkeley. Berkeley drives all the way, takes it in to score. 32-30. Jason Berkeley all the way down the floor to the hoop. Here's Brook in the front court. Honig from 19 off the short side of the rim. No good at the rebound. Knocked down by Berkeley. Couldn't hold it. Picked up inside by Pavley. Puts it up. No good. And now we've got a foul call. Give this one to Greg Dennis. That is his third. The fifth team foul on Charleston and Brooke will be shooting from here on in. This puts a little pressure on Charleston with three of their top men with three fouls and no substitutes hardly to come off the bench. Honig will go to the line where he is two for two in the first half. Young man who can do it all for Brooke. Honig at the line to the right, flips it up, cross the rim against the glass and in good. Honig with 17. Now shooting for another one. 33-30 in favor of the Bruins. Their first trip to the state tournament and they're in the championship game and they're leading as Honey gets another one, leading 34-30. And this is Jason Berkeley right in front of us coming over the 10 second line and who's with him? Tony. Over to Tony Jackson, deep right. Jackson back to Berkeley. Looking a 1-3-1 and they're not afraid to bring it out on you. Here's a bounce pass headed in for Mason, and it's knocked away from him, goes out of bounds, and Charleston will inbound it. The inbounder is going to be Greg Dennis. Dennis at his own baseline. In on the left side, the ball to Jackson. Out to the top of the key. Taken by Berkeley, tries to get it to Mason, trickles off his fingertips on the turnover. Brooke comes up with the ball. Down comes Brooke. Gallo to Honig. Honig baseline right. 
almost an air ball. Follow up left. Kevin Curry, no good. And underneath, we get a foul call. Foul charge to Bobby Honig. That is his first. He's, a, he's an aggressive ball player, Jack. Just one foul on him. He really goes after him. He knows how to handle his body real well. Inbounds play comes from Ivy Hall. Ball taken by Jason Berkeley. Walking it up over the 10 second line. Got the 1 3 1 alignment. They spread it out to half court and then drop it back. Jackson looks underneath. Jackson outside to Berkeley. Berkeley with the ball up over his head around to Jackson. Jackson gets it in to Dennis. Dennis a turnaround shot with a man up tight on him. And the foul called on Honig. And it's before the shot, I believe. Right. Number two on Bobby Honig, so he picks up a couple quickly. We're going to take him out for a minute or two. Charlie Basil comes in. Six footer, sophomore. Inbounds play under his own basket. Dennis on the right side to Jackson, outside to Berkeley. Bur uh, Brook leading by four. Charleston with the ball around Ivy Hall on the left wing. Now they swing it around to the right side. Get it in the Mason. Turnaround shot right of the lane. No good. Rebound scrap. Ivy Hall comes out with the ball. And they say a jump ball. And on the alternating possession, Charleston gets it this time. The Mountain Lions will inbound the ball again under their own basket. Here is Dennis back deep to Berkeley. Berkeley looks at that zone, which is now a 2-3. Gives the ball to Jackson. Jackson backs off from Basil. And the ball comes out to Berkeley around to the left side to Ivy Hall. He wants to get it inside. Can't. They take it over to Jackson again and off the ball. We get a foul call on Pavlik. Elbow. Jack, you certainly do pick up those defenses real well. I'll tell you what, I've, I've, you're amazed me the way you can just look out there and snap those defenses off like you do. Coach, if you're serious, you make me feel good. I'm real serious. I told some people today, I said, I've never been able to understand how you can pick them up that quick. It's the most worrisome part is the inbounds pass broken up, brought down by Ivy Hall. And the ball knocked away out of bounds and Charleston will get it back. The inbounds pass was deflected by Brook. Did I say Ivy Hall? Yes. He didn't bring it out. Charlie Basil. Right. Let's get it right. Fleming. All right, outside. Jackson coming across to Berkeley. 34-30. Brook leading by four. Now the pass goes into Dennis. A turnaround shot. Off at the right about eight feet, and he hits it. Banks it in. 34-32. Back up the floor. Gaio coming into the front court. Pass outside of the right to Pavlik, who is out beyond the top of the key. Pavlik has the ball again. Over to McAllister. Now Pavlik drifting down. Long one by McAllister. He hits it from the 19 foot mark. 36 32. 105 to go in the third quarter. Jackson in the front court. Outside to Berkeley. Back over to Jackson again. Jackson puts it on the floor. Back to Berkeley deep. Brook playing the 1-3-1. One, one. The ball left side. Ivy Hall into Mason and Mason. A little looping. Oh, that played a hook. He just swung the arm up and He's looped it in the front. Real strong. He just goes right in the basket. 36-34. Charleston still has not had a lead since early in this game. Brook maintains the lead. Basil with the ball. Outside to Pavlik. They pulled him away from the basket. McAllister. Over on the left side. Curry takes the shot. 17-footer and hits it at the left of the key. Now, Brooke is showing us many guns. They certainly are. They're not going to Pavic all the time, and I think they, uh, I thought they would, but they've had him outside and getting the ball to other people. Maybe they're afraid of getting him in foul, more foul trouble inside with it. Right. The offensive variety. All right, here's Charleston with the ball to our left. The ball goes into Mason, and Mason trying to get a shot away is fouled. And let's see who they give this one to. He was in a crowd. Pavic, I believe. Now this one is going to go to Basil. Basil, okay. You guys got good eyes. Here is Mark Mason to the line for Charleston. The Mountain Lions trailing by four, six seconds to play in the third quarter. Mason at the line to the left. Dips way down. Up with the right hand, it is good. 38-35. Mason with 16 points in this game, giving him 67 
in two and three quarter games. He's shooting for the 68th point. At the line to the left. It is up there off the rim, right side. And the rebound taken by Brooke. Here comes Brooke hustling down. Kevin Curry lets it go from out beyond 20. Doesn't make it off the rim. That's the end of the third period with a score. Brooke 38, Charleston 35. This is the Metro News Radio Network. Hey, everybody here. This is the final quarter of the basketball season. Doug, got it. You know, it's going by too quickly. And, uh, Jack, something we hadn't mentioned yet, it could be a northern sweep. And, uh, of course, it, uh, it's still a quarter to go, but the two of them are already in from the north, so uh, that's unusual. Dale Miller's a baseball coach. He loves summer. For me, summer just stretches out all the way to football. It's like a long desert to get across before you get back to football and basketball. All right, the inbounds play for Brooke. Brook with the ball. Gallo coming down on the right side to pass to the right corner. Now they try to get it inside the Pavlik, and it's deflected out of bounds by I.B. Hall. Charleston trailing by three. Led 2-0. Fell behind 4-2. Has been in several ties, but has never been ahead. The inbounds play to Curry. Curry left side, banks went up. He was in short range, and he made a beautiful shot. Banked it in from the left side. 40-35. Now we've got Berkeley coming into the front court and that extended 1-3-1 for Brook. Out here trying to give them trouble on the ball around to the left wing. The ball comes to Ivy Hall. Almost lost it. He gets it to Berkeley. Berkeley trying to shove it down quickly to Mason. It's knocked away and we have a whistle on the play. Foul called on Brook. And this goes to Pavlik. That will be his fourth. It's also the fifth team foul. So Mason will go to the line where he is four out of five on the one plus one now. So the situation is critical both ways down inside. Here is Mason hitting. The Pavlik has been pulled out of the ball game. And let's see who they have pulled in. Now we've got Charleston six out of eight. And Mason shooting his bonus shot. Got Lance Chambers back on the floor for Brooke. And Mason with another one. He is steady in there. 40 to 37. Three point difference. Let's see what Brooke does without Pavlik in there now. Outside, Gallo. And being pursued tightly by Charles to the ball to Honig. Honig goes to the baseline, hits the shot. Fouled by Berkeley. Well, that's what they do. Go to Honig. Honing Mr. Everything. He takes Berkeley down to the baseline, man to man, fires up the shot and draws the foul. That's beautiful control of his body, and, and he just moves into the man and makes him foul him, puts that strong shot up and banks her through for two points. Seen a lot of good individual performances in the AAA ranks where I have, I have followed the games, but Honing has to be right in there with the best. It certainly is. 42-37, Rook 8 out of 12 at the line, and Honing makes the three-point play. 43-37, we got the six-point lead again with 7-14 to go in the game. In the front court, Jackson back out to Berkeley. Double low post situation. Those two big guys down in there. Here's Berkeley around to the left side to Ivy Hall. He bounces it down to Mason. Mason takes it right to the hoop on the left side. He doesn't hesitate. 43-39. Left to right, Gallo back in the offensive area. 
Guile goes through the hoop. Guile penetrates, lays it up, and misses it inside. And the rebound by Mason. <laughs> Guile made a beautiful move to he get inside. Did. Missed yeah. the shot. Here's Berkeley back in the front court to the left wing, to Ivy Hall. And we got Brooke playing a tight 2 3 now. Round to the left side, Ivy looks in, comes outside. This is Berkeley with the ball, and down to Ivy, shoots from the baseline. It doesn't drop, but underneath a foul called on Mason. Number four on Mark Mason. You know, Jack, uh, they say he's all point uh, nose guard off KVC. I think I'd put him on the off KVC basketball team, too. He's a fine player. He's real intense. A little upset over that call. Oh, he's explaining to the official <laughs> and talk. Can't do too much of that because you're going to trigger a response. And that hurts you right about here. Here is Chambers going to the line on the one plus one for Brook. 43-39, the Bruins leading. Chambers fires. He hits. 44-39. 6-23 to play in the championship game. The triple-A title matchup. Brook trying to make it a northern sweep. Here's the second shot. It is good. 45-39. Again, the six-point lead. That's as big as it's been about three times in the second half. They have been pretty tightly engrossed in this game. Here's the ball left wing over to Ivy Hall. Now coming back outside to Jackson. Jackson to Dennis. Dennis in a crowd. Fires, banks it. No good. Ivy Hall with a rebound. He takes the bodies, misses the shot, and the rebound comes outside to Berkeley. It is physical inside. Sure is. Jackson in the middle over to Berkeley. Back to Jackson. That is a 16-footer. He's well off the mark to the left. And the rebound by Lance Chambers. Brook left to right on the attack. 5.45 to go. Brook leading by six. Honig outside. Honig down on the left side to Guile. Back out to Honig. Round to the right to McAllister, who's playing outside. Gives it to Honig. They don't have a genuine big guy inside. McAllister would be their biggest. No, Curry is their biggest right now at 6-5. Curry, baseline left, puts up a shot long off the far rim. Rebound Dennis. Dennis down the floor to Berkeley. It's a big possession for Charles. They need two points here to stay in this ball game. Brook with a 2-3 zone. Charleston. Outside to Berkeley. Now Berkeley over to Ivy Hall. Swinging around to Jackson. They're having trouble finding those guys inside. Hall toward the left corner. Out again to Berkeley. He takes the long one. He is good at that. 19 feet out to the left of the key. 45-41. Berkeley has hit three of those. Let's make it two of them. One of them, uh, one of his baskets he drove down went inside. Now Honig outside. Honig over toward the left corner to Guile. Guile gets it inside, going up Chambers. Can't get it, he is fouled. Chambers will go to the line. And this one charged to Mark Mason, and that is his fifth. That's a tough call. It's a tough break for him. I'd like to see him stay in the whole ballgame because I think he's a, a truly a fine player. And he's getting a standing ovation people from these people, Jack, and I think he deserves it. That's one of the few times I've seen these people react to a player that day. Boy, is something, and that hurts Charleston. Jeff Jones replaces him, a 6'2 senior. You're not detracting from Jones or the effort he'll put into it. It's no. just that Mason is such a powerful performer in there. Chambers he's, misses. The he's first. still firing him up on that bench. He is. He's up <laughs> off the bench yelling. 4.36 to go. Chambers connects. And we have a timeout on the floor with Brooke leading 46-41, an official timeout. Time for this word from Davis and Elkins College. Davis and Elkins College, just listen to our winning record. Al Hall, Director of In-House Educational Programs at George Washington University Hospital. Varsity Basketball, Davis and Elkins College. Missy Hambrack, a Charleston attorney who was chosen as the outstanding graduate of the West Virginia University Law School in 1986. Varsity Basketball, Davis and Elkins College. Cindy Palmier, 
College Admissions Director, Varsity Hockey, Davis and Elkins College. Dwayne Tinsley, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for Fayette County, West Virginia, Varsity Basketball, Davis and Elkins College. Pam Boyd, Coach of the United States Olympic Handball Team, Varsity Hockey and Basketball, Davis and Elkins College. Con Davis, President of Bellas International Limited of the Virgin Islands, All-America Varsity Soccer, Davis and Elkins College. Casey Crump, Head Women's Basketball Coach at Texas Women's University, Varsity Basketball and Magna Cum Laude graduate, Davis and Elkins College. Davis and Elkins College, Elkins, West Virginia, where athletes are students too. Back in at the Civic Center Coliseum, Charleston six out of eight at the free throw line. Brooks shot 50% for the foul line in the first half, four of eight, and in the second half, eight of nine. So the Bruins have picked up in that area, and it's important to them. They've been playing very good ball here. Jack, that was a nice ovation they gave to you, but it wasn't quite what they gave to Jerry last night. But no, it was really half of them were booing me, but what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. 4.36 to play. In the backcourt, Ivy Hall inbounds it for Charleston to Greg Dennis. Honig extended out all the way into the backcourt from that 1-3-1. One, one. Charleston in the front court to the left. And here's a pass cross court, almost stolen by Gallo. Now you get a little lax on that pass, right Willie, and, right. and there they come. Got in the action. Gallo almost had it. Inbounds, Ivy Hall. Ball to Jason Berkeley. Berkeley looking around, bouncing out to Jackson to the right, back over to Berkeley, down on the left side to Ivy Hall. Out again to Berkeley. Here's Berkeley turning at Honig there. Now they finally get it inside and trying to get the shot away. Jeff Jones is fouled by Kevin Curry. Jeff Jones did a good job on that, and uh, the first one up off that bench is Mark Mason over giving him encouragement. So Jones did not play against Logan. And Jones played briefly against South Charleston. That's right. He's in a tough situation here. Seems to me that that might be where you almost need to work a couple of guys in from time to that's, time to have them ready for the emergency. I agree with you, Jack. Jones on the one-on-one -on -one off the short side of the rim. No good. Curry with a rebound. And here comes Brooke on the attack. Honig outside to Gallo. Gallo swings it around to McAllister playing deep down on the right side. Now to come back out to Honig. Now they've been going for a good while without Pavlik in there. They're playing it safely and they're holding a five point lead and off the ball a foul called on McAllister. That will be his third. So we go to the other end of the floor and Charleston will be shooting a blocking call on Aaron McAllister. Charleston had a couple of opportunities to get back in this ball game. Uh, and he, Jones is back on the line again. Jeff Jones. 6-2 senior. A lot of pressure on the kid. He's a left-hander, flips it up. Now he's got the range. He hits it cleanly. I bet he's thrilled to death. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm glad to see him make that one. 46-42. Get out there and get your legs right. This one a little long, and the rebound cleared out of there by Kevin Curry. Curry, a good tower of strength in there for them as they, they need his height. Curry playing outside now and drifting in underneath his chambers. They go around to the left side to Honig. Curry cuts under, takes the pass, turnaround shot from the left, banks it in. Really Great a beautiful shot. play. Beautiful play. Flashed in underneath, took the pass, did the turnaround job. 48-42, the six-point lead for Brook, 3.25 to go. Jackson backs off from double coverage Johnson. Cross court pass deflected, taken by Gallo. Gallo coming down. Gallo in the paint. Gallo lost it. Picked up by Honig. What do you think? He scored it and a foul. He's Honig. the man that made the deflection too, Jack. He made the deflection to do that. Tony Jackson committed the foul. Honig deflected it, picked it up, goes to the hoop. It is 50 to 42. And right at this point. We've got Pavlik ready to come back into the ball game. So a timeout for Charleston. West Virginia's 74th State Basketball Tournament continues with Hoppy Kerchival and this Metro News Golden Moment. March 26, 1983, the AAA Championship. South Charleston against Logan. For Logan's legendary coach, Willie Akers, it would be his last game before retirement. 
On the far side of the floor standing is Logan coach Willie Akers. It's his final stand along the sideline, and he'll go out a winner. Logan with a one-point lead and the ball. Gators throws to Browning. Over the right side, a pass to Hainer. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second, and it's all over. The Wildcats have won. Willie Akers retires a winner of fourth state championship for Willie Akers, and this record crowd of over 12,000 at the Civic Center stands to cheer Willie and and his Logan Wildcats. Four state titles and four runner-up finishes. Willie Akers, truly one of the best to ever coach in West Virginia. The West Virginia State Championship. Memories that last a lifetime. You remember that, don't you, Coach? I certainly do, and that was a real happy time in my life. And uh, I was, that was, it's great to go out and win. And of course, I came back for half a season and went out a loser up there. So I really, I said, I don't count that. I just won't count that. That's sort of a superfluous uh, effort. Yes, it was. Anyway, I'm looking here for uh, Honig with 22 points against Parkersburg. And Honig with uh, 11 points the next time out, 33 points coming into this game. He's got 23. He scored 55. And the free throw trickles off to the left. No good. And the rebound by Greg Dennis. 50 to 42. This is the biggest lead of the ball game. Eight points. And we have 3.05 to go. Here's a lot pass. Ivy Hall trying to get it into Dennis. Deflected beautifully by McAllister. Fine defensive play by McAllister who stole it. Was. And now Brooke coming up with the big plays and Brooke sensing that it has victory within its grasp. The ball to McAllister. McAllister lays one up under pressure from Dennis. It is no good on the rebound. The foul called on Brooke. We mentioned, and we didn't underscore it, that Pavlik had re-entered the ball game. This McAllister commits this foul. So McAllister with four, Pavlik with four, Mason on the bench since the 436 mark for Charleston. Standing most of the time, exhorting his teammates on, telling them don't quit. Charleston, eight out of 12 at the line, and Jackson at the line to the left on the one plus one. He is scoreless in the ball game. High off the rim, rebound knocked down by Brooke. McAllister on the bounce takes it. 2.45 to go, Brooke by eight. Brooke with the ball. Gallo, top of the key, swings it left. Over to Honig. Honig had made five in a row from the free throw line before missing that other one. Here's Honig, baseline left, a 12-footer, it's a beauty. He's a money player, Jack. 52-42, 25 to go. It's a 10-point lead for Brooke. Long pass toward the right corner down to Ivy Hall. Hall gets it inside to Jones, who is fouled by Kevin Curry. It is his second foul. Jones will go to the line. Brooke doesn't want that clock. They need to let that clock run a little bit. They made a couple fouls they shouldn't have made. They should let that clock run a little bit. And it's stopped it a couple times. Even though they have a 10-point lead, they need to let it run. So here's Jones at the line to the left. I'm not even going to attempt to uh, name all of these characters around me because I'll forget somebody. But I want to start, have to start with Tony Caridi, Jay Jacobs, Fred Persinger, Dale Miller. We've got Keith Appel, that young man of Jeff Jenkins, John McKinney, Christian Miller showed up here at the end. Willie Akers, got a bundle of folks here working on this thing. All right, Jones has hit the free throw. This time it is off the rim to the right, no good. 52-43. Ball deflected out of bounds and it will go out to Brooke. Jack, I've heard of all these people. I've heard you announce them a lot and they're, they're a great crew. Well, they really know how to work and, and this is a big job and I didn't realize what it was until I got down here with you, but there's a lot of work going on here. And I've really enjoyed it. Good folks and most of us spend a lot of time together all winter long, one way or the other. All right, here's Honey with the ball into the front court to Gallo. Gallo backs outside, Charleston man to man. Ball goes over to Pavlik. Now they're going to work the clock over to Honig. And off the ball, we get a foul call. A charge to Jeff Jones of Charleston is second. Honig has 25 points in this ball game, and that's 58 for the tournament. 
Mark Mason came in with 51. Scored 20 tonight. And he had abbreviated time because he had to sit out some in the first half. And he has been out a lot of time in this period. Aaron McAllister at the line misses the free throw, but the ball tapped back out to Honig. 152 to go. The ball controlled by Brooke with a nine point lead. Honig outside to Gallo. Gallo backs off from Tony Jackson. Gallo swings the ball over to McAllister, who gives it to Curry outside. Curry to Honig. Honig cutting into the key. Back out to the big guy, Pavlik. Pavlik off to Gallo. Brooke running the clock and the ball to Honig. Honig chest to chest with the defender over to Curry. Curry outside to the right to Gallo. Minute 25 to go and the ball to Honig again. Beautiful job here, Jack. A great job of holding the ball. John Benson wants the foul. Now here it is called on Cody Jackson. Chris Four guy will go to the line. 49 seconds they held that ball with, before they got the foul off Jackson. So we have a minute 17 to go right now. Brooke has led this ball game. There have been ties, but Brooke took the lead. Four to two, never gave up the lead. And there had been a tie for a long while. Here it is. Free throw made good by Gallo. 53-43. Gallo getting ready now for the bonus shot. Gallo reaches and hits it. 54 43. And we got a drive into the key. The foul called on Honig is third. And Jason Berkeley will be the shooter. I'm looking back through the uh, book here to see about the margin of victory in these championship games. And this could be the biggest margin in some time. It could be. It's be Brooks' first, and I'll tell you what, after you get the first one, the second one will come a little bit easier. 1977, Logan 111, Washington Irving 87 in a defensive struggle. <laughs> that was a defensive. <laughs> that Here was a good is one. Berkeley hitting. 53 to 4, or, or rather 54 to 44. And he hits another one. He cuts it to nine. Stonewall defeated Oak Hill by nine last year in the championship game. Now the backcourt, the foul called on Jeff Jones. So Brooke will go to the line at the other end. This has been a pretty good ball game. I mean, it hadn't been too bad. It was stayed to six or eight most of the night, didn't it? After they Under got that, actually, uh, we hit six about three times, right. and then uh, Charleston cut it back, and it didn't get up to eight until we were. We were down almost to the three minute mark, 3.15 to go. That's when it extended out to eight. So it was a close game most of the way. I would think a better ball game from an execution standpoint than either one of the ones last night. Well, I agree uh, with you on that. It, from an entertainment standpoint, free throw missed by Curry. And now on the rebound, we get a foul call. Aaron McAllister, we have to wait because the official usually has his back totally to us. That is number five on McAllister, and it will give him an opportunity to go out of the ball game and get some applause. So far, they haven't signaled for him to come out. Now they uh, go over and inform the bench, and Aaron McAllister is going off the floor, and the Brook people are coming alive. McAllister with two field goals, two out of four at the line, and six points. And now Brook is calling a timeout, and they may be preparing to make some massive substitutions. You want to get as many people in the tournament as you can. Let's take a moment to hear this important message from the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission. Some of the most important people in organized sports never score a point. Today, the trainer is a vital part of every team, an expert in physical conditioning and recovery. 
The West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission, in conjunction with Glenville State College, will hold two sports medicine seminars next month for trainers and coaches, April 9 in Parkersburg and April 10 in Princeton. The fee is $12. For more information, call the SSAC at 485-5494. The Secondary Schools Activities Commission. There might have been a wrong guess on my part. Possibly uh, we'll find Dave Ryder just simply explaining what he wants done in this final minute to protect the lead because I noticed Charlie Basil is ready to return in place of Aaron McAllister and I don't see anybody else stripping off the uh, warm ups. A lot of time the coaches like to tell their players look it's it's over. Uh, make sure Charleston coach is telling his players to, to be take it like a gentleman a sportsman and he's telling his to do the same thing and, and not to try to rub it in and just go out as a good winner and and I think that's the main thing it's a good time out for them so they won't get uh, they could you know it could turn into something they really don't want it to turn into this tournament has not had anything to mark last year remember somebody threw something out of the crowd yes. and uh, but uh, this year it has been free of incidents of this type. Great Dennis at the line to the left. He has scored 13 points. He is one for two at the free throw line. And Dennis puts it up, rims the basket, no good. And the rebound by Kevin Curry. And a foul call on Charleston. So a shot like that by Dennis uh, near the end of the game sort of typifies the frustration of the Mountain Lions here tonight. It's been a long time for them since 1974. They didn't make it to final. Of course, Brook has never been here, so this this is a, a great win for Brook. I mean, it's something they've won some football, but this is the first time in basketball. Down at the other end of the floor, Kevin Curry, also a senior, back at the line, puts it up good. I must have not been playing, paying close attention in this tournament, but is he shooting a two-hand set there? He is. Yes, sir. I, did not, he, I didn't I have, notice that. I have not noticed that, and it's effective for him. 56-45, an 11-point lead. And down comes Charleston, and Berkeley fires one up from 15. It is no good. And on the rebound, the body's toppled to the wood with 56 seconds to go. We have a foul on Ivy Hall. That is his fifth. Ivy Hall, one field goal. Two points. And Jack, what a player he is. You know, he, he scores two points, but he works the ball. He plays defense. He just he passes the ball inside. What a good kid he is. That's the kind of player I'd like to have on my team. It would give you that all and not worry about scoring any points. And I don't want to wear the subject out, but a three sports star, football, basketball, and baseball. Bobby Hooney misses one and also a 4.1 scoop. It's a great kid. I'm impressed with that. I never got over a two point. Here's Jackson. A little hesitation shot from the right. No good. And the rebound by Honig. Honig up the floor to Gallo. Gallo outside in the front court. Whoops one over to Honig. Honig comes back out again to Curry. An 11 point lead. And the ball is out of bounds and all the way up over the press table going for the ball. Lance Chambers did what he had to do to stay safe for everybody. He leaped up over the table, over a young lady, up the steps into the crowd. And he didn't touch anybody. Beautifully done. He didn't get hurt. He's a great, great, great athlete there. All right, now the substitutions come in. Tony Perito comes in. Tom Lupinetti comes in. John Gallagher comes in. They're holding with Bobby Honing in there. He's the glue that keeps them together. Here's Jackson over to the right side to Jones. Jones a turnaround job from 15. Hits it beautifully. 56-47. Nine point game. Long pass down. Here's Gallagher driving. Lays it up unsuccessfully, but he was fouled. Seventeen seconds to go for a championship for Brook County. Tony Jackson committed the foul. Gallagher looked a little groggy when he got up. He's, he's a Husky kid. He's all right. He's a six-four senior. Played at the end last night. Picked up two points. And here's Gallagher shooting a pair. We will pull for him too. And he makes it. 
like to see these men come in and get some points. Love to see the kids that don't get in there much, and his teammates are happy too. They all congratulate him. Now Charleston sending folks in. Here's Andrew Payne, a 5'10 senior, and James Brandon, a 5'10 senior. Travis Ramsour had already entered the ball game, a 6'2 sophomore. Gallagher ready with another one. It's off the rim, no good. 57 to 47. Down comes Charleston, driving underneath. Shot laid up inside by Jason Berkeley. Unsuccessful with a foul call. Jack, this gives some kids that play in this tournament an opportunity for some college coaches to look at them too. And, and I understand that uh, Dennis has a couple of colleges looking at him now that didn't have. And he may end up in a prep school somewhere. So it, uh, it's a good opportunity for these kids to uh, show their stuff to some college coaches here in the tournament. Amari Latta in the ball game for Charleston. See who else they've sneaked out there. Charlie Basil is on the floor. We still got Honig out there, as we say. But keep him in there to hold the group together. Tom Lupinetti, John Gallagher, Tony Perito. Little time here. The officials try to straighten something out with 11 seconds to go. Jason Berkeley will be at the line. Two shots. He has eight points. He is two for two at the free throw line tonight. Spins around on him and will not drop. And Berkeley ready now for another one. 11 seconds remaining. Berkeley digs in at the foul line. Flips it up, cross the rim and in. Picks up another point, 57 to 48. Favor Brook, and in the backcourt, the inbounds play. Tom Lupinetti gets the ball, and he's fouled immediately. Was there a traveling call? There's a... They've got a timeout now. Got a timeout now with 10 seconds to go. We're gonna get Kevin Morris off the Brook bench. A junior, 6'5". Kent Orban, 6'1", junior. Bobby Honig will sit down. 10 field goals for Honig. Five out of seven at the free throw line. 25 points. That's 58 yeah. in the tournament. And best of all, he, he's a team basketball player, and he had, you would call him the glue of the team, and that's correct, because uh, when he's in there, he just makes everything run, and if, without him, they would not be a real good ball club. He's, he's the man that takes charge and does the work for him. Boys happy. They're a happy group of kids. High fives with the manager. <laughs> They've got every right to be happy. They certainly do. They're a class team, a lot of, lot of class over there. They've, conduct themselves very well during the whole tournament and they've come in here and they've done the job very very effectively against Parkersburg against Morgantown and now against Charleston here's the inbounds play what's the man call <laughs> eight seconds to go ball came into Lupinetti that's too much for the crowd now the crowd is buoyed the first time tonight. I didn't see that, Jack. <laughs> it was a trap in the corner. We only have eight seconds to go. The inbounds pass is stolen by Brooke. There comes Brooke. Lupinetti is fouled by Jason Berkeley. Five seconds to go. And Tommy Lupinetti will go to the line on the one plus one. A 5'10 senior for Brooke to get his opportunity. Brooke leading by nine, 57 to 48. And the Brooke fans up at the end of the floor are ready to come out and celebrate in the tradition of the tournament. Here's the free throw, good. <laughs> 58 to 48. Five seconds remaining. Brooke Bench yelling encouragement to Tony Perito, who's playing back. Little guy, 5'6". 
Lubinetti is 5'10. Back of the rim, rebound, pulled down by Charleston, Andrew Payne. Payne driving all the way down and let him go. He lays it up good, but he didn't get there in time. It is overruled by the officials. They should have given it to him. <laughs> that would have been a great thrill for him at That's the end sure. of the tournament game. 58-48 in favor of Brooke. And Brooke in a convincing performance. Just absolutely dominating the basketball game. And the crowd all over the floor. I don't know whether we'll find Keith DePell, but we're going to look for him out there. We will not find him. The final score is Brook 58, Charleston 48. We'll be back to recap the game after this from Shepherd College. Unofficial scoring in the ball game for Charleston. Ivy Hall two. Jeff Jones four. Jason Berkeley eight. Craig Dennis, 13. Mark Mason, 20. For Brooke, Tom Lupinetti, 1. John Gallagher, 1. Lance Chambers, 3. Chris Gallo, 3. J.J. Pavlik, 6. Aaron McAllister, 6. Kevin Curry, 13. Bobby Honig, 25. The fastest growing college in West Virginia owes its success to two major factors, the excellence of its faculty and the quality of its students. Shepherd College at Shepherdstown in the Eastern Panhandle, just an hour from Baltimore and Washington, offers programs in 70 different fields, leading to both two-year and four-year degrees. It's an affordable state college with the quality and feel of a small private school, where 60% of the faculty hold terminal degrees in their fields. Little wonder Shepherd College attracts dedicated students. In fact, ACT scores of Shepherd College students are the highest among West Virginia four-year colleges, exceeding both state and national averages. In addition to classroom and campus excellence, Shepherd draws freely on the metro area for additional experiences and guest lecturers. There's easy access to cultural, political, and technical centers, as well as job and internship opportunities. In state, call 800-344-5231. Outside the state, 800-826-6807 to learn more about Shepherd College, an affordable introduction to excellence. Back again here at the Civic Center Coliseum. The total attendance, 63,007 for this tournament. And now we're ready to swing across the floor. Okay, at the PA microphone on the far side here is Frank Blake for the awards. On behalf of the Board of Control, the Board of Appeals, and the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission staff, we thank everyone for being a part of this 1987 West Virginia Boys State Basketball Tournament. It's unfortunate that the purpose of this gathering is to determine a winner because in our eyes, all of the participating schools are winners. Back on November 17th, the last fall, all teams in the state were equal and each had the opportunity to be where these teams are right now. So it's a great honor to have come this far and we want each of the participating teams to know that it deserves the respect and admiration of everyone throughout the state of West Virginia. The National Federation of State High School Associations motto is, athletics is the other half of education. The West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission would like to take that a little further by saying that we feel that athletics also help provide the discipline, integrity, and courage necessary to cope with the problems in life. Now we would like to recognize David Gillespie and Jack Flanagan West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission Board of Appeals members who will present the awards to these outstanding basketball teams. Our first award will be the Sportsmanship Award and the winner is Oak Hill High School. Oak Hill sending a representative down to pick up the sportsmanship award and that is a tribute to Jim Lilly and his program. He certainly is a fine coach been in it a long time so uh, that's a great honor for him and uh, I'm sure that he it, 
will thrill his family to death. He has a son that's not uh, doing too well. He used to be a coach at West Virginia Tech, Jim Jr., and he's had some uh, uh, illness uh, as of late, and I'm sure that'll tickle him to death. Here's the representative from Oak Hill. The next award will be for the best cheering section. And the winner is Logan High School. There it is, Willie. Well, we got something out of it. I, so we do have a great bunch of fans, and I'm glad to see them get that. It is an incredible following. It certainly is. So the Logan representative will uh, proceed down here on the floor. The picture here, we've got the <laughs> Brook team seated on the yes, uh, chairs. The all tournament team. Here's the all tournament team. We'll tell Please you about come the picture at this later. forward time and remain for pictures. From Oak Hill High School, John Staunton. John Staunton, key man in the attack for Oak Hill. Good player. From Morgantown High School, David Pavelko. Mr. Everything. I Morgan really Town. like him, Jack. I think he's one of the finest guards I've seen in quite a while. He, he does everything well. Passes, plays defense, and scores. And I, I just thought From he was From Charleston good High School, Greg Dennis. Greg Dennis of Charleston. Nice young man. I think he does a great job. I think he's got a good future ahead of him. From Brook High School, J.J. Pavlik. J.J. Pavlik of Brook. Another fine player. Hard-nosed kid does a great job. From Oak Hill High School, Tracy Shelton. What can you say about him, Jack? He's Not a heck of a player. He has said it all himself. He sure has. From Logan High School, John Holbrook. John Holbrook. John's done a great job all year for him. He's been a, a hard-working kid that, that, that he did it on his own and with the help of the coach, but he had to work Brooke for High him. School. Bobby Honig. There it is, Bobby Honig. Listen to this crowd. He's one of the two that I think are the outstanding players in this tournament. And they're going to hold a big one here. Charleston here it comes. Mark Mason. Listen to that. No doubt about him. What a player. Honig and Mason. My kind of basketball players. That's a pair. Look at them standing close by. Yeah. Honig is a little taller. And Not I, quite as solid through the thighs and the legs, but they are something. Good size, though, isn't it? Pavlik, they said, did not play well against Parkersburg. Did not have his game, but he popped right back in against Morgantown. I'd like to have that team. That'd be a good one. I'd like to take them on the road, would you, Will? I sure would. There's a couple more kids in the tournament that are, are outstanding players. Of course, if you don't advance, they don't get there. But uh, Morgantown had, uh, what's the kid, Damp? Uh, Dahmer, I really liked him. Of course, you can't pick them all, but they, they, he did a great job, too, in this tournament. So they're out there in the center of the floor, receiving the applause and getting their pictures taken. I started to tell you, Brooks seated to our right, the entire now team with their like fans behind, Charleston to the left. Awards to the runner-up team from Charleston High School. Please step forward now to receive your awards. I don't think Logan's picked up their cheering trophy yet. They, they must have gone on home. <laughs> Here's the uh, Charleston team coming out to pick up individual awards. Jack, it's nice to see a team that uh, uh, they're well-disciplined, well-behaved young men uh, all through the tournament. No problems at all. Just came out and played basketball and, and you know, didn't argue with officials. They just did a super job, and that's what it's all about. And, and the coach needs to be complimented to school and, and the, the, the Kanawha County. The coach from Charleston High School step forward to receive the runner-up trophy. John Benzel along with Greg Dennis coming out to receive the runner-up trophy. And now with the members of Brook High School, step forward to receive the individual championship award. And the Brook team members coming out to receive their individual championship awards. This is a big thrill for them because that's, this is the first and uh, probably won't be the last, and I'm sure their coach is thrilled to death. He should, he's, I think it may be his son with him there.
They come out, they make a little move around the awards table, each receiving the award and then going back to their their bench area, which is right out on the floor now. Managers, the whole group. I noticed the uh, one of the players on the television talking about what they were going to do. And they, they were real proud of the, what they accomplished so far. The class AAA West Virginia there Boys it is. Basketball Championship the Trophy. Championship trophy. The game ball. The game ball. Brook High School. And Dave Ryder comes out with his whole team. He's motioning for them to come with a certain authority. You guys in the business, you know, it's like you all, you all have the same moves, don't you? Yeah, sometimes you, when you don't want them to come, they always come to you too fast. We'll return to the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum in a moment. This is the Metro News Radio Network. Thank everyone for being a part of this 1987 Boys Basketball Championship Tournament here at the Charleston Civic Center. We'll see you next March when we do it all over again. Drive safely. the victorious coach Dave Ryder head man with the Brook Bruins here and with a smile on his face and the first trip to the state tournament he wins the championship he is 25 and one I've got the veteran Willie Akers here beside me he's won a few you tell me how it, how it is to get here for the first time I'll tell you been here for the first time we were scared to death you know and the kids kept saying they weren't but we were a little nervous the first night against Parkersburg we played more relaxed last night against Morgantown and I think the kids just made up their mind we're gonna come out and play basketball today rather than worry about everything that's going on around us and I'll tell you you know it's a great feeling I, I you can't describe it and I know coach Akers has had that feeling because I've coached against him as a uh, as an assistant coach when Brooke played uh, Logan earlier in, in our careers up there and I'll tell you it's undescribable, okay? And, and the only thing I'm happy for is those, those 12 kids out there because they put everything, their heart and soul in this to be 25 on one. I tell you, it's tremendous. I thought that uh, your team was so poised. It didn't, it didn't break away until the fourth quarter, but they maintained the poise and kept the lead. There were a few ties there, but they never bent the least bit. We've been, you know, we have been in the, that type of ball games quite a bit this year. And our kids, that's one of the trademarks I think of our kids was that not to bend, not to break. They will bend a lot, but they've never really broken except for the one ball game against Fairmont West. And you got to give those kids a lot of credit. 
And you know, the other thing I got to do is give our assistant coaches a lot of credit because we had two freshman coaches scouted every every trip away game here. And I mean, they worked their tails off. And we were up for like 2.30 this morning trying to get, get ready for Charleston. And our kids have paid the price because they behaved themselves down here and stayed in their rooms and, and, and concentrated on what the business was to play basketball. And I tell you, it paid off for us. And we're, we just thank God we've been here. Willie, really, you ask him a technical question. I tell you, I, I watched your team play, and you uh, used a 1 3 1, a 2 3, and a man to man, and I thought your kids handled it real well, changing those defenses. So that shows that they're a good, smart team, and they did a great job against Morgantown in that 2 3 zone. They really. Uh, shut Morgan downtown for a while. Well, I, yeah, I really appreciate those compliments because we've worked on that all year. We're basically trying to be a man-to-man, -man, I think, because man-to-man, everything else stems from that. And so if we can play the good man, then all, all our other defenses work for us. And consequently, our zone defense, our 1-3-1, uh, was, was tremendous to us all year, and it paid off toward the end. The only thing our kids were afraid of in our 1-3-1, it didn't work as effectively today as it did against Morgantown, was they were afraid of the big kids inside, and we weren't getting a trap in the corner. Once we were able to start getting the trap in the corner, we were able to kick the ball free a little bit, and that's when we started to break up a little, open, open up a little bit of a lead for us. Those were hard-nosed kids, too, out there. They played a great game, and, and they don't fuss with the officials. They just go out and do their job, and, and both teams did. Well, and we I, were real happy We appreciate that. that. You know, we so, appreciate many, that. so many good kids and, and so many uh, outstanding players, but the one I want to point to, for some reason, I've taken a liking to Bobby Honig. I hadn't seen him play before, and, and he reminds me of Bobby Huggins, who played for WVU, yeah. both in appearance and, and the way he goes after the game. What about him? I'll tell you, Bobby Honig is, a, uh, first of all, is an ex excellent student, like a 3.7 student. And the other thing is he loves the game of basketball, and he's worked very hard at it. And Bobby could score 20 or 22 points a game very easily for us, we thought. But the thing was, we started with a team concept. So he was willing to give the ball to the big kid inside, J.J. Pavlik, or whoever was open, or can a jump shot from the outside, which, you know, to me, really gave us the team attitude and the family atmosphere that we've had all year. And he started it by him simply giving the ball up rather than putting up a lot of jump shots. He had a couple shots tonight he could have taken, and he would have normally taken when he was a sophomore, maybe last year as a junior. This year he gave him up. He hit the guys inside, and I think that made us a better ball club. Say congratulations to you, to your players, to your school, to your cheering section, to your community. I know it is a tremendous thrill. I tell you, we appreciate that. Great job. You know that's a northern sweep for you. Yes, yeah, that, we were reminded <laughs> that when we came in from the Peyton City people and the Central people because we rooted for them. They said, you know, you got to take one more to, to make it a sweep. And we said, well, we know that, but we just got